Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through a Non-Submission, it's Layla, brought to us by DBSoft. Layla is a Famicom exclusive action platform maze game, as you can see with the maze action on the cover, but there isn't as much maze as you would necessarily expect, though it takes a little bit of navigation, especially in later parts of the game, to kind of figure out where you need to go and how to complete everything. In the game, you're playing as Layla, who is on a mission to go from asteroid to asteroid. You'll be collecting various items and defeating plenty of bosses along the way, as well as you have to save your companion, Iris, which will end up helping you out. And then eventually make your way to the final asteroid, taking out a boss and trying to stop the evil Dr. Scientist Madman that's trying to uh, destroy and do bad things and all that good common stuff you have in classic video game plots. But for the most part, the core of the game is platforming, taking out all sorts of enemies, figuring your way through each of the areas, and collecting a lot of weapons to do so. While we'll be using mostly the main pistol that you have unlimited ammo with, there is actually a large variety of guns that you can get during the course of Layla, which is one of the cooler aspects. There's tons of different crates you'll be able to find on each of the asteroids. Destroying them will give you random items. Sometimes they'll just be like a scoring increase or extra health, and a lot of times they will contain the different guns, such as your Uzi-like gun, your grenades, your bazooka, you also get throwing swords or throwing knives, even though they kind of look more like a sword from the icon, but when you throw them, they're pretty small, so I guess a knife. You also get like a shield that can protect you that will go around you, making you invincible for as long as you have enough of it in your inventory. As well as the throwable axes or tomahawk-like weapon that you'll be able to use. It actually comes in handy on a few key bosses during the course of the game. When we start off the game, we of course take control of Layla and we're working our way through Asteroid 1. At the top of the screen you'll notice your total score, the life meter, and then whichever gun you currently have equipped, along with the amount of ammo that you have for that particular gun. The number in the upper right corner is the key card like things that we'll be picking up, one per asteroid that we get to travel to. Thankfully, the path through Asteroid 1 is really simple. It's probably the most straightforward that we're going to see of any of the asteroids throughout the course of the game. Here, we're making into this corridor, which leads us to the first boss encounter of the game. Now, switching up your different types of guns, weapons that you end up collecting will help you figure out what the best strategies are for each of the bosses, uh, though I kind of have my own strategies that I end up using, mostly using the default handgun as much as I can. All you need to do is, of course, shoot at him as he's jumping back and forth. Sometimes he'll be able to jump right over your head. Other times he will kind of just stand there for a second and jump straight up into the air, which is the game kind of tricking you a little bit, because you may see him get ready to jump and try to walk underneath, and then all of a sudden he ends up either landing on you, you try to jump over him, and you land right directly in him. But once he's taken care of, head up the elevator and then to the right, and you'll complete Asteroid 1 here. Between each of the asteroids is the bonus stage. During the course of the bonus stage is more of a scrolling horizontal shooter, and it kind of works like other little bonus rounds and certain other shooter games like this where you have to destroy the entire group of enemies in order to get any points, and if you're able to combo with multiple groups of enemies in a row, you'll get more bonus points for doing so. So, such as we start off with 1,000 and get to 2,000, then we'll get to 4,000, and upwards to 10,000 points for defeating one particular group of monsters. Now, when you end up missing one enemy in particular, like if you miss a group at all, uh, then it goes back down to zero, and you have to start that kind of combo all over again. I usually end up trying a little bit in the first one, and then from then on, I just kind of just randomly just press the button and wait for to get to the next uh, asteroid. I wish there was a way to make these segments go a little bit quicker because they pretty much are identical to one another. The farther you make it into the game, uh, you'll be seeing the same exact thing as far as this bonus game is concerned. There isn't really a huge variety to the types of monster streams or enemies that you're going to be seeing during these, so with a little bit of practice, you can pretty much get it down to mastering each type if you really want to try to get that high potential score. I'm one of those ones who usually doesn't care a whole lot for scoring games, so I usually get pretty bored with it. One interesting thing, though, is when you make it to the next asteroid, you can actually backtrack and travel to previously explored asteroids at any point during the course of the game. So you can make it to the 8 and then go all the way back to asteroid 1 if you wanted to. 
Really, the only reason would be if you actually didn't grab the key card or anything like that on the planet, so this prevents you from being permanently stuck or anything like that, but either way, still kind of an interesting mechanic. When it comes to the platforming itself in the game, there is the whole system of momentum that will come heavily into play, because of course, doing a running animation before you do the jump, you'll be able to leap up a little bit higher. You'll also leap up higher if you're standing still, you duck, and then jump up into the air. This will get you a little bit higher uh, altitude as well, allowing you to reach certain areas. The game has a lot of hidden blocks, hidden passages, when it comes to the main kind of core cave of the asteroids. Every asteroid in the game starts off with that core like cave-like area, and then you make it to the first elevator, which ends up taking you into the more like spaceship style parts that we're seeing, for example, right here. Obviously, the asteroid parts get a little bit tougher with tougher enemies, and also get harder to navigate because of so many blocks that you'll have to destroy along the way, and there's also a few times where you can warp. There are not very many times, but if you press down and then up, you'll be able to teleport going from like one platform above to a platform below, and you need to use this at a few key spots in the game in order to progress. So keep that in mind as far as if you're playing through the game and you feel like you can't progress any farther in a spot, more than likely what the issue is, there's either a hidden block that you haven't destroyed yet, which a lot of them take multiple shots to destroy. Like for example here, I'm destroying a series of blocks in order to get through. A pretty simple path of course, since it's at the very bottom. But a lot of times, if those blocks didn't break after a handful of shots, you'll have to start jumping up into the air, find hidden blocks to destroy, get rid of them and then kind of form some sort of staircase type thing or whatever it may be in order to get your way through. Here we're going to go in the elevator and then immediately to the next floor in the elevator and this will take us to the boss encounter for asteroid number two. This guy kind of floats up into the air and he goes back and forth either in like an arc where he'll kind of come down and do like a loop and then go back up to the ceiling or he'll just come straight down and then back up. I'm going to use the machine gun on him as this does a pretty good amount of damage and I have a decent amount of ammo for the machine gun built up. Once he is taken care of, we're going to go up the elevator and head off to the next bonus round and head on to Asteroid 3. The bonus game for here is more of the same as uh, just trying to rack up some extra points if you would like to do so before eventually arriving at the third gate and the third asteroid. Well, it would have been a little bit confusing, of course, the first time without any sort of guide to get your way through the mazes and all. Layla is one of those games that I really wish would have ended up coming to North America. It was pretty early in the Famicom's life cycle, coming out in 1986. So as an early title had it come over to North America, even if it had been 87 or 88, I still think it would have fared fairly well, mostly due to the action in the game, with the variety of different weapons ends up leading it to be a pretty good hidden gem, as far as Famicom games are concerned, the ones that didn't make it over in any way, uh, shape, or form into the North American NES library. Here we arrive at Asteroid 3. This is where things start to get a little bit more difficult, a little bit more complicated. Some new enemies are introduced, especially during the early parts. These annoying bouncing guys with the big orb heads kind of go up and down from the floor to the ceiling. And they also have this annoying, like, weapon thing that goes back and forth. As you can see, just above me, this thing will cause a lot of damage. There's not a lot of invulnerability time. One of the few little gripes I have as far as the game is concerned. A little bit of invincibility would be very nice between hits so you don't end up getting completely destroyed. Though thankfully, there is a lot of health in the game. It's very easy to lose all your health in an instant. Uh, here's an example of us doing the down and then up in order to go from the floor to the top there. So keep that in mind if you get stuck. You may want to try that before panicking too much if you're trying to uh, play through the game on your own. Uh, over here, for example, we're going to do a down and then jump up into the air in order to get high enough into the air in order to break apart these blocks in order to get through. So here you can start to see uh, a lot of the strategies and stuff that we're going to have to do in order to explore farther uh, asteroids as we make it in. 
Like I was mentioning though, there is a lot of health because a lot of enemies you end up defeating have the good chance of dropping a health item, whether it be the small ice creams or the slice of cake or a big cake. Uh, there's even apples and other uh, food items that you can grab in order to get even more health back. It's funny that the fruit ends up giving you, I think, just as much, if not more, than some of the, uh, like, dessert treats. So, they made it seem like apples were a little bit better for you than maybe eating an ice cream cone. As you make it to the far right, though, we do end up going up the next elevator here. We have to be careful of running underneath of these uh, enemies as they kind of move up and down. Spawning of enemies is a little bit inconsistent when they spawn. Basically, they will always spawn in the same spots, but it's their line of sight, where exactly they appear, that ends up changing up. Heading down the elevator, we're gonna go over, and this is where the uh, key card thing, whatever machine is located for this particular asteroid, and then we're gonna go right back into the elevator and continue on our way. So basically, let's say if an enemy was coming straight at me right here, like if an enemy was coming directly at Layla's face, Sometimes it will come directly that way, or it may appear like a set of pixels below or above that particular line. But you always will know something is going to be there, but where exactly it comes at you. So like lining up shots with things can sometimes be difficult. We have the boss here though for the third asteroid, which is this dragon-like enemy. It's a very typical boss that you see in a lot of classic NES games uh, and platformers in general. It has a very sporadic pattern. It can destroy your health fast. So the best thing is, of course, to get it far enough away as much as possible in order to deliver the shots. So the machine gun does work well on it, so you may want to use that in order to hit it. Uh, and once it's taken care of, though, we're going to blast off and head back into our ship and go towards Asteroid 4. The first few asteroids start off pretty short, and they get longer the farther you make it in because there's more rooms that we're going to have to explore the farther we make it into the game. Here, of course, is another set of the bonus round, a little bit different patterns, but similar enemies. Uh, overall, though, nothing new really overall about this particular part. Here we arrive at Asteroid 4. We have more of those weird guys that kind of go from the floor to the ceiling. More of those weird fire shots that just kind of like move back and forth very slowly. Like I said, you want to avoid those as much as possible. You can take them out with firing your own gun at them, but you don't want to let one get into you as it moves back and forth because like I said, it will drain your health very fast. The bubbles from the snake-like enemies can also be annoying, and you'll find that there is some inconsistencies when it comes to enemy attacks, uh, as well as, like, projectiles doing more damage sometimes than the enemies themselves, so it's sometimes best to run through an enemy. Uh, there's also a few occasions where you have spikes in the game, like on the floor, and the spikes will actually do less damage than certain enemies, so there are a few times where you may want to actually just run across the spikes, take damage from that, instead of having to deal with some tougher enemies that actually could do more damage to you. Stuff like that is like the things you slowly start to learn as you make it farther in. For example, here right before the elevator, we have a bunch of blocks that destroy when you stand on them. So that's another part of the whole like maze-like structure you have to kind of learn that sometimes you may need to stand on a block in order to get it to disappear so that you can continue working your way wherever it may be. Over here on the first floor of this place, we're going to go to this very first elevator and go in there, and this is going to take us to where the machine thing, keycard thing, whatever it is, ends up being for Asteroid 4. Now, when it comes to the elevators in the game, 
they can go multiple directions sometimes. If you press a direction up or down and it doesn't go that way, that just means that elevator can't go that way, but sometimes they can go up and down, just up, just down, and sometimes it changes up weirdly. Like, you may be able to go up in an elevator, take you to a room, and then when you press back down again, you go to a different place. This is where the maze parts are a bit more frustrating than they necessarily had to be. So, thankfully though, there are guides out there, uh, written, as well as, of course, I'm working on my video guide here for this game, uh, that you can use to kind of help you figure out which directions are the best as far as getting through the areas. There's also a few other little, like, hidden warps and stuff that I may not know the location of, that can get through areas a little bit quicker sometimes, once in a while. But the path I'm going to be taking is the guarantee place in order to get to all of the items and get to all of the bosses. Like, for example, here we go with a rematch against the guy we saw back on Asteroid 2. He's pretty much the same exact patterns as before. He may be a little bit quicker this time, but either way, we're going to be using that machine gun, watching out for him as he just goes back and forth, and once he is taken care of, we'll be heading out and heading to Asteroid 5. Here we arrive on Asteroid 5, you can see the wonderful purple color scheme, as well as more enemies are introduced. You have the bouncing sphere bubble guys, uh, as well as you will have a lot of these fish guys that kind of like come at you like missiles. These are a good example of enemies that are always going to spawn at their spots, but whether or not they're coming directly at you, whether or not they're just below you or just above you, uh, is a bit random, so it's a little bit difficult sometimes when you're going through a smaller corridor of blocks, like if you're in between two layers and there's not a whole lot of room, you want to take those sometimes a little bit slower so that you can aim up your shots appropriately against them so you can stop. One thing I do really like with the controls is if you duck, you stop on a dime. There's no momentum after you end up ducking, so if you're like running and then you need to duck real quick in order to fire at an enemy coming at you, you're able to do that. Turning around though, the momentum is a little bit slippery. So if you're like running towards an enemy and then you want to quickly like, go the other direction, you may end up sliding a little bit farther than you want to, maybe accidentally into them. But if you want to get the jump on them, sometimes it's best just to duck, in which case you'll stop on that dime and be able to get a few shots off before you're able, uh, before they're able to of course hit you. As you're noticing during the course of this whole area, there is a lot of like hidden blocks and hidden things that break apart that you need to destroy in order to navigate. Easily the most complicated of these opening areas that we've seen thus far, and that's pretty much how things will be from now on, in fact even tougher as we make it a little bit farther in. Here I'm going to use the crate to my advantage, taking out the evil robot guy as he's trying to come towards me. Another little annoying factor that I have with the game is when it comes to the enemies, you may want to clear them out sometimes before attempting to get to certain elevators, because even once you enter the elevator, you can still get hit. Until you're far enough into the elevator on or off screen, uh, it can be difficult at times in order to avoid the enemy, so always be careful. And if you can use things to your advantage like walls or like single blocks before you destroy multiple of them, like you can duck and fire at a guy. Uh, below a breakable thing, like for example here, keeping him stuck so I can take him out before going through. Always use those things to your advantage, you will not regret it, especially when enemies 
don't disappear a lot of times when they go off screen and will sometimes chase you down. Even if you go way off screen from them, they may keep coming at you if you end up getting stuck, so you always have to be a little bit careful. Here I'm hitting up into uh, this elevator, and this takes us to this area here with these weird things coming out from the ceiling. Be careful of them, you can destroy them though. Uh, they take a little bit of firepower, something like the tomahawks or the throwable axes are very good at taking these out. In fact, I will be showing that off very soon as we make it a little bit farther into ones that are a little bit harder to dodge. So you may want to make sure you have at least some of the axes, which I do recommend getting the axe weapon. Uh, few bosses, especially late game bosses, really easy if you have the throwable axes. Stopping by this elevator, and it just takes us right up to the top floor here, which is where we need to go. Then make our way through a small set of corridors. You can run through, uh, sometimes you can hit multiple of the spots in a row. Be very careful though, there's more of these little hanging guys that are going to keep popping on down trying to hit us as we make our way over. Now this is where things get complicated. You want to drop down into this pit below. This is going to teleport us to this room located here, and this will allow us to get to where we need to go. I think there are multiple ways to get to this point, but that's the fastest way that I know. I recommend also using your grenades in order to hit the robots in this small little area before making it to the elevator. Once here though, this is where we're going to save Iris blow open her cage, walk into her in order to save her, and then you can just leave. You don't have to actually fight the boss. It's a similar boss to the one we've already dealt with before, uh, back on Asteroid 1, uh, but uh, you don't have to defeat him if you don't want to. Once you have uh, Iris with you, game gets a little bit easier because you can do double damage now, but this also means you use two times the ammo, because every time you fire out one of the shots using the characters, you end up firing out two, which gives you double firepower, of course, but you'll use up more ammo because of it this way. Here we're going to use the axes in order to take out some of the hanging things, and then go up into this elevator where we make it to the boss chamber for the asteroid, the actual boss this time around. This boss is difficult. It's a hanging boss, that will keep popping on down. You have to make sure that you're not directly underneath of it because it destroys your health. You want to attack it from a distance and use the axes in order to hit it. Basically how I think it works is that there's one that's technically fake and you're wanting to hit the real one but telling which one's the real one is difficult. When you finally do enough damage to the real one you'll destroy both. I I think that's how things end up working on the boss, though even after doing it a few times I still wasn't positive, I know it was like a number of them you had to destroy and then you instantly win, or was it like you're hitting a real one? Either way, once it ends up dropping, we're going to leave that asteroid and head off to asteroid number 6, of course after completing another one of these mini game rounds. Now we arrive at asteroid number 6 with its uh, lighter blue tone to its cave-like segment, immediately being attacked by one of those fish missile enemies. Enemies here are very similar to the ones that we just dealt with in uh, asteroid 5. Here's an example of running through spikes instead of just going up and fighting the enemies. I would have lost a lot more health if I had decided to jump up because I would have had to deal with the enemy plus the falling spikes from the ceiling. Over here we have a bit of a maze that we have to kind of figure our way through, going up to the top portion, dropping down a little bit, and then kind of going back and forth with a few of the breakable blocks in order to get through. This took me a little bit of time the first few uh, times I was playing the game to just memorize exactly the pattern in order to kind of get my way through, as it's very easy to just get lost firing at the wrong block or firing extra at a block you thought was breakable but then realize, oh wait, that wasn't here, that may have been at another spot. 
While the game has a lot of variety as far as the areas are concerned, it does change up a bit. It's not as bad as some other NES games. There are still repeated areas or repeated setups for certain blocks. The only thing good is they do end up changing it up a bit. So even if you have the same exact layout of blocks that you're dealing with, the pattern to get through, which ones are breakable, which ones will fall apart when you land on them, will end up changing up on each of them. So they keep things fresh at least a little bit when it comes to that. During the course of this asteroid, I think, during this main area, there is a spot, I think, you can take a warp to a spot a little bit farther into the asteroid. Uh, but just to uh, show everything, I'm just going to go ahead and go straight to the elevator all the way through and up it. Once we go to the first floor, immediately head right back down a couple of floors. You'll go past a bunch of floors, but eventually you will end up at the basement, which is the place that we need to go to in order to find the object. This is one of the harder ones to find right away, just because you wouldn't expect to go down many elevator spots in a row. I think it's the one of the times you can go down the most in a row uh, during any of the asteroids in the game. Then we're going to head now to floor 1, start working our way over, jumping over the pits. A lot of the pits, as you may have noticed throughout the course of the game, there are there's few times, like that one earlier where it took us to kind of a different location, but a lot of times the pits, if you fall in them, will give you a little bit of a health loss and then put you back just a few steps or so. It really doesn't end up pushing you back all the way too far uh, from wherever that pit, particular pit ended up being located. Have to kind of maneuver our way through a little bit up to this elevator and then head up and then down and land here at floor number two. There's a lot of different openings here with different elevators kind of set up here. We're going to drop on down here and immediately down again. If you're quick, you can get past the enemy without him hitting you. And this will take you to floor B4, basement four. Blow open a bunch of the blocks at the very bottom of the screen and then run past the elevator that you end up seeing. You're going to want to break open a series of blocks here in order to get yourself through, and we're going to be taking the next elevator that we end up coming to. Taking the elevator down will take us actually to floor 4. We have the difference between B4, being basement, and 4F, being the fourth floor. There are a few enemies here. Once again, you can use the blocks to kind of take them out so you can kind of manipulate them a little bit, but there are projectiles from some of them that you have to still be cautious about. Either way, taking that elevator we just did will take us to the next boss encounter, which is very similar to the guy that we've been dealing with multiple times throughout the course of the game, the one that had Iris kind of held captive and the one that we battled in the very first asteroid of the game. There really isn't much difference when it comes to this guy. He has a different color scheme here, uh, but we're still going to blast him using the machine gun. Hopefully you have more ammo than I do. Uh, since I played the game multiple times, I don't pick up as much ammo, though I recommend if you decide to try out the game for yourself, pick up a lot of the ammo. Pick up as much as you can going through so that you have plenty of it, especially as you make it uh, farther into the game. After a pretty lengthy bonus level, or what felt like a bonus level that was lengthy at least, we make it to Asteroid 7. This has the jellyfish-like guys that are similar to the shark ones or fish ones that we were dealing with before, but they move in a wave pattern, and this makes it a little bit harder to dodge. When you make it here, run all the way to the right, and you'll hit the wall, but this will cause all the spikes on the top and bottom parts to fall. Then you can work your way up. If you try to go straight up to that top portion, you'll end up running into the spikes. You won't be able to pass them. There's no way to destroy them. 
At the end of the corridor, you'll have to take one of those teleporters by hitting down and then up. You'll go to the bottom, and then you want to immediately jump up to the middle platform and start working your way through. So here you can see that more complicated maze setup uh, as we make it here. Now when you make it to this spot, you're going to destroy a bunch of the blocks on the bottom, watching out for the weird fish, jellyfish guy, whatever he is. And that way you can get the spike to fall from the top and then jump up there. So once again, we have to kind of manipulate things a little bit. We're going to do a big running leap, and this will allow us to get up there and then take out a couple more blocks at the bottom before going on through. At this point, you've kind of gotten used to blocks being able to be destroyed and what you need to, but you can really see, like, they get... A little carried away, uh, especially in Asteroid 7 and 8, as far as what, how much you have to destroy. Here's another example, we're going to run through and get all of the spikes to fall, but instead of going up, we actually have to destroy the blocks right in front of us this time around, and this will take us to the elevator. So that's the example of, like, the same setup we had earlier, but different blocks were breakable in that second set that weren't breakable in the first set. When you make it up here, you have these weird little guys, robots on the ceiling that will kind of like jump a little bit at you. If you're not up, you don't have to really worry about them too much. We're going to take the elevator to the second floor here. Wait for this guy to kind of bypass, it's just easier to wait for him than even bothering taking him out. This will allow you to jump over and take the elevator down. Once you have arrived at B4, stand on this platform and take out the robots from a distance. There's a few of these guys throughout these relatively small corridors. It's best to keep your distance, keep firing at them. You can use a better weapon if you want. I'm going to be using just the normal blaster as you can see. It does take a few shots, but really not too many in order to get rid of them. We're then going to take that next elevator, run it into, and go downwards, which takes us to the fourth floor of this asteroid. Stand right here after getting past a few of the robots, I recommend taking them out because while you're trying to destroy these blocks here, they will just end up causing issues. Uh, I also recommend using grenades in some of these areas that you can hit guys a little bit above you because of the way that you arc throw the grenades themselves, and this will allow you to keep a little bit of distance between you and the enemy so you don't end up running into them while you're trying to destroy all these blocks everywhere. Head up and then head down immediately, and this will land us here on floor 1F. More robots on the ceiling, as well as plenty more breakable blocks. Be careful of this guy as you make this little bit of a leap by, you know, kind of banging your head. But if you time it right, you'll be able to make it over the pit clearly. In that next area, though, be very careful. More robot guys kind of waiting for you. You can take the upper path a little bit to get past them, but it's pretty much identical to the area that we just did. You can destroy the blocks then here safely, because there's not a robot waiting for us right away, uh, and this will lead us to that next elevator. Head on down in the elevator, and this will end up taking you right directly to where we need to for the item for this asteroid. Once here, we're going to head up in the elevator, and then head up again immediately, and this will take us right to the boss chamber. So, didn't have to do too much tracking around after we found the item. Use the axes in order to destroy the blocks, and then for the boss itself, go all the way to the right side and throw axes from a distance. It only takes a couple of axes, and this guy will drop. So that's why I said earlier about the axes being very important, because they will destroy that boss. And the boss that we're going to be fighting at Asteroid 8 is almost identical to that boss, just his head breaks apart and runs around the room as well. But other than that, it's pretty much a very similar boss, though it's going to take us a little bit longer because of that. But still, uh, those axes are pretty much, in, you know, invaluable when it comes to being able to get through that little area quicker. Of course, you can take them out with other guns if you don't have them. Uh, it's just going to take a lot more firepower, uh, and it'll be a little bit harder to get through it, because not only do you have to deal with him, running into him, he also has a projectiles that he will shoot out, fireball-like projectiles, uh, that will come at you, and they can hit you multiple times, which is one of the other annoying factors with projectiles in the game. They don't, like, instantly dissipate when they run into you. Instead, they just kind of keep going off screen until they get, you know, into something else. In which case, they can hit you multiple times, draining your health very fast.
Finally, we have arrived at asteroid number eight, the final asteroid of the game. And uh, this one is, of course, pretty complicated. When you start off, get as many of these enemies to get past you, because this spot here is tricky. Hold down the jump button when you have everything cleared out, and just hold down the jump button and hold right on the D-pad. When you hold down jump in the game, you keep jumping. It's one of those, like, repeated things, so that you'll be able to keep jumping repeatedly up those, like, staircase-like platforms and get over. Bit difficult at first, I ended up messing up and falling into the pit a couple of times until I realized, oh, you can actually just hold down the jump button uh, in order to get past that. Now over here, you're going to do a running leap, and this will allow you just barely to clear things. Here you can either run across if you time it right, or you can just kind of do little short jumps across the gap. There's a couple of gaps like this in this spot, in this whole little area, this cave, uh, which are a little bit difficult. Take the top path here, watching out for a bunch of the guys, get them kind of off screen uh, before you decide to head downwards. Some of the aliens will just kind of walk away from you, thankfully despawning as they do so. You're then going to do a big run over here to the right. Make sure you destroy the blocks on the bottom portion too so that you can get that last spike to fall. That's crucial so you can actually fall down that little opening. Uh, and you'll be followed right up after that with another little tricky platforming segment. Do a nice big running leap over that final pit and you'll start inside the main portion of this stage. Asteroid 8 is very annoying. Not only, of course, is it the last one, so it's going to be the most difficult enemy-wise. The robots are just relentless during the course of Asteroid 8. But also, you have to basically do the asteroid twice. Because you're going to find the item, and then you have to kind of basically go back to the very beginning of this whole part and do it again. So you, all the rooms you're seeing, like the room you're seeing now and ones you're going to be seeing for the next little bit, we're going to see twice. So it makes things a little bit more difficult. Uh, and annoying overall, making Asteroid 8 uh, not necessarily one of my funnest uh, levels as far as uh, when it came to mastering it and stuff like that. Here during Floor 1F, just do little short jumps and you'll be able to easily get in between all of the robots and keep working your way to the right. Here we're going to do running leaps. Usually a lot of times I'll just do a little hesitation, a little pause. And that'll allow me to clear the ceilings and be able to kind of land safely in the center platforms each and every time, if you just time it just right. This way you avoid having to deal with any of the enemies, and you'll make it over to that next elevator. Now from here, do a running leap upwards to the top, and this way when you get up here, deal with the alien robot guy who's going to immediately attack you. Then drop down and hug right on the D-pad so you land safely. Now here I'm going to use the force field, though I have to do this area twice, so I'm just going to, you can either use it the first time around or the second. Maybe you'll get lucky and get more of the force field as you're going through, so you can use it again later on. Uh, but I'm going to use that in order to get past a few enemies to the next elevator, where I make it to B4. Now B4 is where eventually we're going to be coming back and leading us to the boss encounter, but the first time around, what we're going to do is you have to go through a series of these blocks, it's very easy. You don't have to really worry about too much because the enemies are very easy to deal with. You just have to destroy a lot of breakable blocks during the course of this. So, as you saw, we skipped that uh, entire first elevator. Now, next up, we're going to keep running through and skip the next elevator and then destroy more blocks. Yep, so pretty much identical to what we've been doing already. But destroy another whole uh, series of blocks. And past that, we're going to go to this elevator and hit down. Once you hit down, then immediately hit up. And that'll take you to this room here where we collect the eighth and final object of the game. Now we just have to work our way to the boss chamber and thus completing the game. You're going to hit up twice in the elevator and that's going to take you back to this room, which was, if you remember, the very first room that we came to. Thankfully, this gives you plenty of weapons to pick up will probably replenish any of the health that you lost during the course of that whole area, so that's a big plus. Um, as well as you will usually, I think, automatically get some of the axes or tomahawks to throw, so that's another big uh, added addition uh, to coming back to this room, so you have plenty of that ammo for when we make it to the actual final boss. Just like before, we're going to leap our way through watching out for the robots. First floor, we're going to once again do the little short jumps. You can do kind of big leaps if you want to to get past some of them a little bit easier. Uh, but either way, you want to make sure that you land safely between two robots. Uh, and this will allow you to kind of keep going, not getting hit. Uh, and then go down in the elevator, taking you to this room where we're going to do that little slight hesitation with our big leaps here. Uh, and this allows us to just bypass the enemies and get on through.
Once at the end, you're gonna hit up, and this is gonna take you to the first floor. Here, we're gonna do that big running jump, take out the robot, and then drop on down. Now, this is where I used the force field before, but I don't have any of that ammo this time around. So it's a little bit harder, so I'm gonna do a couple of jumps, get through quickly. You don't wanna hesitate too much on an enemy. Like, if you're gonna land on the same platform as an enemy, you wanna get off of that quickly, because like I said before, vulnerability doesn't really exist here. Either way though, once we're back into this room here, before run past the uh, first set of blocks and elevator, go through and destroy the next set of blocks. I'm using the more powerful weapon here just to speed things up a bit. And then passing this elevator here. And then once again, we're gonna make it to the third elevator. From here, you wanna hit down again. And now we're gonna go right when we make it to this one instead of going through the elevator again, which would take us back to where the item room was. From here, we can just kind of head to the right. There's nothing really to worry about, just a few blocks in our way. And then hit down on this part, which will lead us to the boss chamber. For the boss, we're going to use those axes and destroy the boss. His first form, pretty easy, just hit him. And then for the second form, you have both his floating head and his body. Take out the body first, just to make things a little bit easier. And then for the head, he's going to move back and forth, firing a consistent string of projectiles. Tons of projectiles that can really hurt you. Focus on landing the shots when it comes to the axes. The axes are a little bit difficult. You gotta learn how the arc works a little bit with them, but once they're done, head up the elevator, and then just run to the right, finish up the asteroid, and enjoy the ending to Layla. While it may not have been perfect, it actually is in English. This is the original Japanese version of the game, so surprisingly, the ending there is actually in English. This isn't a, uh, a fan-translated version of the game. And now, of course, we get the credits. Like I said before, Layla is one of those games that I wish would have come to North America. It's cool to have female, you know, protagonist in the game. The whole mechanic of saving Iris and then having her along with you, uh, mimicking you, is a little similar to what we saw with the Mickey Mouse Capade game, where you and uh, where Mickey and Minnie both can get a, a weapon and both use that to help you take out enemies really easily. Uh, and since Iris doesn't get hurt, that also ends up helping you as far as certain enemies are concerned. Uh, the only, like I said, downside was, of course, that you use double ammo on your special weapon. But the special weapons are one of the coolest parts since you have so many different weapons in your arsenal in the game. So when you play it, if you ever decide to check out Layla, experiment with the different items and find which ones and which weapons you like the best. And there are plenty of spots in the game to gain ammo. You notice throughout the course of my run, I kind of skipped a lot of areas with crates, uh, just gathering the ammo that I needed for sure to run through things. Overall, there's a handful of Famicom titles out there that didn't make it to North America that I think are worth giving a look to, and Layla is a, an example of one that's from the early days of the Famicom, or earlier days of the Famicom, that is well worth at least giving a try to. But, as we get to the end, as we see the end roll across the screen, that's gonna wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.